So the name Longbeard uh, stems from, I guess, kind of a fictional character that I made up when I was, I think, 18. Um, it's supposed to be a wizard, also kind of like an alter ego type of name. I started playing some shows in the basements of New Brunswick and found a really good community there. And since then, I I eventually recorded an album, Sleepwalker, and um, found a label. Um, I feel like, you know, starting out playing music as an Asian American was definitely somewhat challenging. Um, it's hard to have people take you seriously sometimes. Um, and then, yeah, just seeing other Asian American women um, in the music industry is always, you know, really inspiring, really um, reaffirming that, you know, we can also play music. With Japanese Breakfast, I feel like I genuinely um, really appreciate um, Michelle as, as a person and as a musician and seeing her work really hard um, is definitely really inspiring for me. I think, um, yeah, some, you know, I definitely feel like there's not a lot of space for women of color, especially in indie rock. And I mean, I, I think that's only changing though, and it's really nice to see that it's changing. But yeah, oftentimes, you know, you, if you really think about that, like sometimes like that might be limiting or like defeating, just thinking like, oh, well maybe, yeah, it's harder to be taken seriously or you have to, you know, work above and beyond just to be noticed as a musician um, and that your work is valid sometimes. Um, I feel like it's it's pretty separate, but I think um, the creative process of um, in both um, kind of overlap sometimes. Um, and with CompSci, I think a lot of that is about like problem solving and you know thinking of yeah, how, how to make things better, how to make things work, and that can definitely overlap with music, especially in more like engineering and um, the mixing side of it. I guess I was just kind of feeling it out, like you know what I could be doing or what I wanted to be doing, and I'm not like completely like against working with CompSci ever again or anything. I've been focusing more on like freelance stuff now and like. Yeah, personally, I think I just wanted to just kind of slow down and like see what I could do musically. Um, I don't know. I think I feel the most at home just surrounded by good friends, or like, or even when I'm out like on the road. I think I think that's the funny thing. It's like I feel most at home when I'm constantly moving. <laughs> You know, and just being in different places and experiencing different things. So. Um, I mean, I guess I still have a lot of Jersey pride. I mean, going back to the question, I guess if I had to pick a, an actual place that felt like home, I would say New Jersey. Um, since I've spent most of my life there, and I've met a lot of really key friends and people there that have, are still really close to me today. And um, yeah, it just has a has a vibe. <laughs> I would love to see probably Kaktu Twins and um, the Blue Nile, which are both um, bands from Scotland for the ladies. <laughs> um, I would love to see SZA actually too, I've never seen her play, but um, just wait, waiting for new music. Yeah, also I would love to see um, Wong Fei. Um, I haven't been playing as much as I was now, um, but I still play Smash.